Hey guys, the Monk Two here, of course. Today we're discussing the Elbing. Now this is a one hell of an interesting boat and uh, very unique, must say that, so I actually quite enjoy this boat. Now, let's look at the modules here. Uh, first recommendation is aiming systems. Main Baron mod is not a bad choice, but the 5% additional reload time, I just don't think it's worth it. I like the additional accuracy plus additional torpedo launcher traverse speed. Second module here, recommend steering gears actually over propulsion. The steering is pretty darn atrocious. It's borderline Yamato with 890 turning and a 5.7 rudder shift with the module on for DD. That's pretty darn bad. So yeah, agility is definitely good. I run concealment mod over steering purely because there's 5% incoming dispersion and obviously concealment still helps. Uh, obviously, you know, it's just the best way of doing things a lot of time. Uh, main barrier mod is what I recommend, but if you're feeling a lot more comfortable build, the gunfire control mod is a lot more comfortable, so those are both good, viable options. The HE, though it has German quarter pen, is not really that special. It's nothing to look at. I honestly don't recommend using it as much as you can. Uh, the reeling selling point is that AP with high alpha, improved pen angles, and really bonkers pen. With our build, we get some decent range, and our, our build, again, is 6.1. I recommend running the flag as well on, the booster flag as well, will help you out. Uh, the A, consumable defensive A, is not softball, which is annoying. The smoke is just a little bit longer, a little bit less, actually, than the Americans. The A is okay. With defensive A, it does work. Torpedoes are C mines. I'm just, it's a term though, and it's not very fast. It goes 36 knots of our build. We did slow it down for our build, but we'll go more into that. Detection's not too horrific at 5.9. Armor is really good here. Um, the typical bow and stern of a typical normal DD. This is a really selling point. Notice 25 millimeters plating all across the ship there, pretty much, which means you are invulnerable to any HE below the caliber of 150 millimeter guns, which is all DDs at tier 8 and a fair amount of them uh, otherwise. As well, this, the turrets are actually really, really incredibly tanky for a destroyer. They just don't break. Which, uh, if you're comparing this to another tier 8 DD, they just, just you know, that's where it typically looks like for a destroyer. Absolutely no turret armor. So your guns don't get broken very easily at all. And for commander builds here, uh, we're going for uh, Eric B. Mostly because he has Observant Rage, which is 8% reload. Uh, actually using Mortar, which is very nice. 10% uh, buff to AP and HG shell damage with a little bit of detectability. Honestly, it doesn't really matter detectability too much of Elbing, so I 100% recommend a 10% damage buff to your ship. You could run Twist and Track or Perceptive, but I actually prefer more range. 8% more range is so much more handy because you're not really there to hunt DDs, you're there to do damage. So yeah, again, with the additional range bod or the booster, you get some decent range there. You get, uh, yeah. So you got like 12.1 from my build currently. And then finally, last but not least, you get smoke in the water for just a bit more smoke. And Stoppel is a really good choice. And if you really want to commit to the micro cruiser play, Leviathan is actually a little bit better in my opinion. But Unstoppable does help you that. When you're caught unaware, your end is broken and you cannot steer or you cannot move your ship. So I do recommend Leviathan if you want a bit more help and you're really devoted to that micro cruiser play style. Definitely uh, buffing your help pool is helpful again. With William Sims, buffing your health pool, again, one with, with Leviathan, you get some really nice health pool, almost 36,000 health, which you're basically approaching cruiser levels of health, which is really high. <clears throat> additionally, as well, additionally, additionally uh, you get uh, a wee bit of speed reduction with Leviathan, but it's so worth it. Plus, you get a 20% rudder shift, which the ship desperately needs when the enemy's close by. Zibbing is really good here, really essential. Minimum ricochet angles of your AP shells already are improved, but let's improve them a little bit more. And you can just watch the armor piercing penetrations fly. This thing is an absolute monster for its AP and has the best accuracy in the game. Another alternative build you could run for a welter build, uh, cheese build, or a fully packed one where you get additional smoke and defensive AA is a render shear with something similar like this. You could buff the speed with your ability a little bit, or even more, maybe go for range instead of steer clear, but those are good options for you. Now onto the game here. Now guys, Elbing is played a certain way. It's not a DD, that's for sure, but it's not a cruiser either because you have basically cruiser health points without a Citadel. You have a smoke screen. You can take some punishment. You are very tanky. You are the DD that doesn't give a crap, okay? DD that skipped leg day, but it didn't skip uh, the, muscle, the muscles, you know? It's got the biceps there, it's going for it, you know? So you really want to, your playstyle for Elbing is catching broadside targets and murdering them softly. In particular, the cruisers. Your torpedoes are sea mines, which is really good. You've got 10 of them, which is nice. Uh, so you can use them to range out targets and clear areas. Also for self-defense, also very nice. 
so you can torque battleships or cruisers that get too close. But then again, you just use the AP to absolutely brutalize the improved with the improved penetration angles and the best sigma and the best accuracy in the game. You can just absolutely murder uh, broadside cruisers, even angled cruisers, and especially angled DDs. You want to be shooting AP at pretty much all targets at almost all angles, unless they're straight bow on, then you need to switch to AP, the HE, sorry. But the AP, what you do for the destroyers is you hit them when they're angled, and if not, you make sure you hit them just like we mentioned in the ZF6 video. Uh, I'll link that below there. You just do the, exactly the same way there. Um, basically, you just uh, you make sure that you have the water on the shell. But uh, it's not always possible. Hey, the more angled the DD, the better is. So, you know, if they try to counter your AP play, you'll, they'll have a field day. Basically, you have to go bow on in order for, to stop this AP malarkey. And your 25mm side plating, which is massive, by the way, extends the whole ship pretty much. Uh, means you'll shatter all the HE that they fire you. Anything at legendary tier and tier 8 will just shatter. Even most tier 7s will do it. Only the Z23 with 150mm guns. The gate, which is not even available, and uh, the Z20, Z, sorry, the Z46 again with the quarter pen of his HE, the 127. So Z20, Z46 is probably the only counter DD that Elbing has, uh, because um, just purely because it can actually pen your hull. It's, it's pretty tough. You could obviously you could use AP to counter the Elbing, but then the Elbing could just smack you too. It's it's such a really good boat. You saw the damage we did, 13k with armor piercing, pretty sizable uh, damage number there, honestly. The tweets are very, very slow, I can't stress this enough. So they are there for more air in denial and just covering areas. If this guy's in the smoke screen and he stays in it, I'll send some to the torp, they'll hit him. Uh, I'm gonna torpedo high traffic areas and see what I get. I recommend this guy's gonna slow down. You've got a good spread of 10 torps as well. And uh, yeah, as I said, anything broadside, you just wanna open up on it if you can. Obviously you will take damage from certain boats, but be aware if you shoot at an angled boat like that, angled DDs, you can do some really good damage there. Uh, not too much there, we did a little bit there, but you, I've tried to Citadel Yamato, don't have the pen to Citadel Yamato, but we have the pen to actually get comfortable penetrations on Yamato. You absolutely murder the uh, battleships, um, the best you can do roughly about 6 to 7k a salvo, and you may have noticed here the accuracy is really on point. Most accurate shells in the game, because obviously destroyer's accuracy is very good already, but this is improved destroyer accuracy, so you really want to be shooting the AP. and. Uh, just getting yourself in that range, a comfortable range, and just absolutely just blapping everything. And you may have noticed, guys, we've only fired AP. We've landed two torpedoes, yes, on the Yamato, but we're on 58k, 62 already. And obviously, we've got we've got a looks like we've got a perma flood in this Yamato, which is odd. But you can see the pains we're getting in this Yamato. And you guys pay attention to the wee small numbers every time the number damage number increases here. Again, we're very sluggish with the <laughs> with Elbing, so we don't mean to. This lightning runs into us here. Uh, we can't really. Uh, we can't really stop ourselves, really. You know, we're just uh, we're kind of that way. You know, <laughs> we're kind of like a micro cruiser, as I said there. And this is what running Leviathan as well, the increased health pool and more health is the better. As you can see, we're actually trying for the cell there, Citadel here, but we're getting the pens, and you can see the pens just are so extreme. We actually kill him, and Delny's not had a fun day either. I believe we actually torped the Delny. That's I think that's what we did there. And uh, we just blab here. As you can see, the fire damage he's doing to us, but you can see everything else is almost just shattering because Delny can't actually penetrate our side armor. He's bouncing everything, only a couple pens off the stern. So, yeah, as you can see, we've just taken all that, we've taken that out, we've used our fire control, the damage control, sorry, and we're just going to smoke up and farm Yamato. Now, he is bow on, so we're going to try what we can to get as many pens of AP as possible, and then maybe we'll switch to HE. I will admit I am a tad uh, too focused at AP sometimes. I should be switching a bit more often here because a fire on this Yamato will be quite nice. But you can get some good solid damage with the AP because it does so much more than HE shells and that's something to know. Plus again, if you aim higher up to the superstructure, in the superstructure again, you have the most accurate uh, guns in the game. So you can really get those shots in if you have time and uh, get some really solid damage numbers and you'd be surprised how this how much how fast this damage is up, adds up by the time we we're discussing this by the way we're up to, already up to 112k damage 113 and it's really damage is adding up unfortunately we had to smoke up but the dd also smokes up there which is a little bit annoying but hey he wants to get some damage into a little bit frustrating which means we need to leave our own smoke screen which is Elbing smokes are very important. They're very, very good smokes. They're almost as long as an American, just 20 seconds off that timer with the commander skills that I have. 
but still very good smokes and you really want to use them as much as possible because you want to sit there and farm with Elbing. That is, that's what its job is to do, is sit there and just farm broadside TPs, broadside cruisers and angled cruisers and angled battleships and angled everything. Anything that's angled or broadside is your target with AP. Anything that's by one is your target with HE. So you can do some sizable damage to honestly anything, which is amazing. Um, you definitely want to use it. You can see we're just picking up the high caliber. Look at the pens we're getting on this angled Yamato. <clears throat> the damage you're doing every six seconds is insane. And you can just see the damage racking up. This Yamato is just, he's, he's not interested in shooting us, which is his mistake. But even so, it's such an absolute unit of a ship this is. It's the fat DD that just did not skip gun day. This is the thing, this, this didn't skip gun day. And you can see the damage is just racking up. This is what you want to be doing here. If you're uh, if you're kiting, if you're kiting away, you can always disengage. You are a destroyer in terms of de detection, so you can always just stop shooting and disengage. And you can take a wallop as well, because even with HE, you'll probably shatter most of the modules. With Yamato, probably not, because it's a high caliber BB. The HE will absolutely pen you, so you got to watch out for calibers like Yamato, Conqueror, and like higher caliber gun, 1600 HE will do some sizable damage to you, but the AP will not citadel you because you are still a destroyer by nature class. So you are really, really tanky in your armor scheme and you can really abuse it here. We do have to give in to our HE and we get some HE going here, maybe set a fire on the Yamato because he is giving basically bow one to us, which is obviously the best angle he can present for us because our penetration angles are really, really good. We actually get a double fire, quite lucky because the fire chance isn't that great on the Elbing. But hey, that's not bad. Uh, lightning drops as a smoke, which is even nicer, which makes sure we don't get any hit at all. Which means we can just continue our farm on this poor, poor Yamato. We've got a fire set. Now we have to try and get the AP pens here because the AP pens are so nice here. Probably could switch back to H here, but again, I'm a little bit uh, too focused on AP this game. <clears throat> that is my wee, my one regret for this game. But then again, at the same time, you can see the results of the HE and you can see the results of the AP. The AP is really just kicking HE's ass right now. We actually get the pen with the, with the AP and we kill the man here. It looks like Bismarck's to the south here. Uh, again, contesting caps is nice. You want to be fighting for caps, but you don't want to be... Your main goal here is to get damage on broadside targets. Your main goal here is not to be a destroyer because you're not a destroyer. It may seem like you're a destroyer, but you're a micro cruiser. You're not like a micro cruiser in the sense of like Kava or Rosk, where you're having to kite everywhere. You want to find a good position where you're not shootable and farm and situations where you are shootable and farm you want to be in there do the damage and get out or just straight up kill the target uh thing is something to note as well you can really brutalize cruisers and i can't stress that enough i fought a mino in this thing consistently and actually beat them consistently because if, if they give broadside to me i'd absolutely brutalize them and i can go bow on to the mino as well of course, the gun configuration, you want to be like an angled stared on to Yamato, to Mino, sorry, Minotaur, but uh, obviously, please take care in fighting a Mino. It's still it's still going to be a rough fight for you if the Mino is uh, is is prepared. Uh, again, you are watching for large caliber uh, shells like, like Bismarck here. He did a little bit of damage there, but he did bounce off mostly, which is actually quite good because he's bouncing off the guns. That's the amazing thing about it. You can actually use... use uh, your gun is to bounce shells. Really what's amazing about this boat as well, the boat, one of the downsides to it, it's really slow, really sluggish, and it actually is really high tendency to eat torpedoes and die. Uh, so be aware that you have detectability, the, the maneuverability of a slug, uh, <laughs> pretty much. I've noticed though you can take a couple of torps and live. You can take one on the nose and on the stair and stuff like those sort of regions, and you can actually take like about two torps or before you die, which is quite nice considering uh, you are basically a DD and you can you can take off can take a fair amount honestly but obviously that is your biggest weakness as Elvin you are very slow you have a lot of bad maneuverability sorry I say so you do take torps very easily and yeah you are not a fast boat that is really quite evident and your lack of HE is your lack of usable HE and torpedoes means uh, you can get rushed down if you're not careful but at the same time you can bully anything that comes near you, honestly. Conqueror and Yamato, large caliber BB shells will do some damage to you. If you ever encounter 14 inch battle battleship guns, you can bounce if properly angled. <laughs> I don't think you'll encounter any 14 inch battleship guns at tier 8, but still, the AP on this thing is amazing. Here, as an Odin, as an example, fairly heavily armored ship, 
if you're shooting a battleship caliber guns, you might even get a lot more shatters than the Helving does. Helving gets extremely good results, as you can see there. Four over pens and two pens. The damage is really adding up, guys. I can't stress that enough. Or right, discussing here, 174k. Next salvo just pops in. You can see very accurate shells. That's 177, and then add, the damage adds up. We usually land a torpedo as well. Uh, landing to be used in high traffic areas is what I recommend because these are C mines. They only go 50 knots, not very fast. Again, we can bounce Odin shells because Odin only has uh, 305 millimeter guns, so we could actually bounce Odin comfortably if we need to, which is always nice. We're actually approaching the 200k mark, 195, and we got some damage on this mark here. <clears throat> Bismarck, I don't think we were in range of Bismarck. Again, range is really important for Elbing because you just want to have that additional uh, safety zone. You want to have a more farming zone because when you pop that smoke, you want to get as much usability out of it as possible. Our first smoke wasn't well used there, unfortunately, but our second smoke, I believe, will be. But yeah, we'll see what we can do. We've got our full health Iowa. Well, he's, he's 10k off his full health, but hey, we're doing what we can here. He's not focusing us, so we're going to shoot him here a little bit with air AP. He is angled, so AP is the, is the pick. Unless he's straight up by one, AP is always the pick. And that is generally the rule of thumb for Elbing, because their penetration angles are so good, and the penetration is just so good. So we're going to pick up our damage here. We need to get find the right sweet spot to see what we can get here. There we go, two pens, 198. We switched to HE a little bit, because he's just a little bit... Maybe get a fire in a man. We actually get a fire here, so we're going to fire here. We're going to switch back to HE. We're going to pop our smoke here, hoping the guy shoots. He does actually shoot, which is great, and actually gives more angle, which is even better for us. Now, you have to be aware that the Elbing smoke doesn't dissipate very quickly, so you actually have to slow down your shots if you have the same build as I do, because you can get yourself spotted out, not, out, not out with your smoke for periods of time. So let's be aware of that. We're down to 9,000 health here, but again, that's still a fair amount of health for our destroyer, and you can really get the damage out in here. Which is always nice. Uh, I believe he gets spotted by either firing or by the... I can't actually see the very well there. Probably by the DD. So we're going to fire some torps his way. It looks like he's turning in. So we're going to adjust for that with our torpedoes. We're going to fire what we can. Back to the HE because he's basically by one. The gun turrets are protecting quite a lot of his, of his uh, superstructure there. <clears throat> so we'll shoot a little bit of HE on this man here. I really don't want to use it though, because I really want to switch to AP, because the AP is so good in this boat. We do get the fire, which is great, so we switch back to AP here, and we're just going to start farming this poor man again. And as you can see, we're on 221k in this Iowa, who was 10k off full health, is now just straight up dead. It, he did have a, it did think he did get chunked a little bit by the battleship over there, but still, the damage has been done, the damage has been quite significant, 226k. I have no doubt this record will be broken, but this is, as 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 of recording this video, this is the current damage record. Bear in mind that Elbing only is uh, only is in the hands of the community contributors right now, so it's not really much of a record, but hey, you know, <laughs> Wrigley's tried. And we don't get fourth kill, with, we don't get the fifth kill with the best mark, which is a little bit unfortunate, but we're just going to have to settle with 226k high caliber, 320 shell hits, 3782 base XP, and yeah, pretty darn good game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed and I uh, hope this helps you guys out in your decision process for the auction. Bear in mind, big, big disclaimer here. No ship is worth that amount of money. Uh, wait for the global XP. Auction is just too much money to spend on a uh, pixel ship, guys. Even if this boat one-shotted targets with a single shell, I wouldn't recommend it to be bought in the auction. I would wait for global XP. So, you know, no matter how good the ship is, guys, don't give in. Trust me in this. You'll, you'll, you'll thank me later, guys. So have a lovely day and stay safe, guys. I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.